in the midst of a huge transformation where peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano, she, her, and hers, and I am the Partnerships and Community Manager here at All Voices. Today, I am very excited to welcome our next guest onto the interview series, Karina Pupaza. She is the Chief People Officer at Nimbus. Karina, thank you so much for being here. I know you've spoken before on our webinars, but for folks who are listening, can you introduce yourself and share a little bit um, about your career path, including your pronouns? And when you were younger, how did you answer the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Hey, Christina, and thank you for having me again. Indeed, we have met in the past, and it's a pleasure <laughs> to meet you again. Um, so, Krina Pupaza, Chief People Officer at Nimbus. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, a couple of things about myself. I, as you can tell by my lovely accent, I'm a first generation immigrant. I came to the US in my early 20s, thinking I would stay here for a short period of time. And long story short, that is over 20 years ago, <laughs> I started my career thinking that I will be a clinical psychologist. And with my move here, I slightly, I took a slight turn into organizational um, psychology and human resources um, and, and people, which has been my career since at this point. To, to your question, how I answered that question, and, and it's a bit of a sad story, but um, I thought I would be an astrologist. And I, I don't, I, I imagine going to visit planets and I imagine being on space shuttles. I loved sci-fi, I still do. And I remember going to school and telling my then teacher that this is what I wanted to do. And her response was, oh, kind of like a weather girl. And that shut down my idea. Probably I would have been horrible of both, but, but that, that's my experience with dreaming big. <laughs> well, you fast forward to today, you are the chief people officer at Nimbus. You are dreaming big and helping others to dream big as well in their career path too. How do you think your personal journey has really led you to specifically be a leader at Nimbus? Um, many things happening one after the other. And one of the things that I do like to, to talk a lot is about having a direction, a long-term direction, but also realizing that you are shaped by the circumstances. What has helped me a lot to get from that little girl to later on to dreaming of having a career in clinical psychologist and uh, psychology and then in human resources and where I am today is very much the people that believed in me. So uh, when I got to share what I wanted to do next, and I oftentimes think in five-year increments, the people that I shared that with, they didn't think I was going to be a weather girl. They thought about what I can do next, right? And um, encourage me and help me think even bigger than I thought at different points in my time, in my life, and also offering me the right coaching, the right advice, and the right opportunities. And outside of that, so first I will say dream it, and then work at it and keep consistent while letting your circumstances and your personal story take you where it's supposed to take you. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. We just did an exercise to internally around what your personal goals are, what your professional goals are, and then what actions you're going to take to get you there as well. And just thinking about it as, as a journey too. Um, I know in your current role, you're working on a multitude of different projects and initiatives, collaborating with different folks. And I definitely have specific questions around that, but I definitely want to start off our conversation too with just an open-ended question around what's taking up the most brain space in Krita's mind right now. What's the next problem or situation you're currently trying to solve? Um, you are right. There's always a multitude of different projects, initiatives, and things we could be doing. 
there's also the realization that there's only that much you can do at one point in time, right? So for me, it's very important to be intentional about what myself, our team, our company is focusing on next. So you are not losing track of all of these shiny other projects that you could be picking up uh, at one point in time. Um, what are we working on very intentional at this point? It's really a couple of things. One of the, the um, top ones being, how do we invest in our people? Mm -hmm. How do we take Nimbus from this smaller high growth company to a place that is being recognized and, and mostly because of what our people say about us? And, and to me, it's both a business imperative and a social contract at the same time, right? I want to ensure that our people will be in a better place few months, a year into the future or when they leave us than they were when they engaged with Nimbus. So very important, we are focusing on What's our proposition to investing in our people from a learning, from a growth, from a development perspective? Um, and in addition to that is, how do we continue to support the business in a way that we can grow and scale to match with our ambitious business goals? Yeah, I definitely agree that it is a business imperative and kind of a, a social kind of contract there as well, especially in today's talent market, all the conversations around the great reshuffle or formation and being employers of choice. Um, as a leader, as chief people officer, but also as an employee of the organization too, and a team member experiencing this culture, what are qualitative and quantitative ways we think about kind of measuring that employee happiness? Um, great question. And, and I'll share how important it is not only to know where you're standing, but know where you're going, right? Yeah. You hear every single business person, be it that they are in the um, chief people officer role or in any other um, role in the company talk about culture and how important it is and what they are doing in that space. And in reality, is, it's probably one of the most important aspects and I do not know studies but I'm sure they could be out there or if not somebody should think about them it has a big impact into whether or not the company is going to to be successful for the future so what are ways of measuring it and and none of them it's perfect but they are complementary right mm -hmm. anything from and to me oftentimes that connection with the individual is so important you and I may be working for the same company and I can say it's a fantastic place to work. The culture is phenomenal and your reality is that it's not or it's very different than what I'm experiencing, right? So we, we tend to generalize, but reality is culture is experienced individually and you need to understand how it feels for the person next to you. Things that may work for one may not work for the other and the other way around. So one of the very important aspects, and I know we are going to, to talk later in our conversation, is around choosing or, or having a match between the company culture and your own values, right? Because no company, no, no culture is perfect for all people. And what may work for some doesn't for others. So going back to what are the ways that we um, measure it and what are the ways that we keep, keep in touch with where we are. Definitely asking people, one-on-one yeah. -on -one conversation, right? What, what do you think about our culture? How do you experience our culture? What's our culture to you, right? And every person or many people that you will talk to will try to give you a different answer. Um, and if you can take all of those answers and, and see what are some of the common threads that gives you a better sense of what culture it's actually experienced like. 
We now have very robust engagement employee surveys, right? That can also tell us about um, what our employees think, how they are experiencing our, the culture, what they like, what they don't like, what are the things that are working or not working. Um, and also just observing, seeing how people are behaving from the top of the house all the way into the organization. I believe between all of these measures and all of these methods, you can have a good grasp of what an organizational culture is, where are its strengths, where it may not be as strong, but also getting a sense of the different pockets that you may have within the broader culture and realizing that at the end of the day, it is an individual experience. Absolutely. And I think that individual experience, customization at scale, personalization, really asking people how they're feeling is really important to that kind of formula and thinking about kind of how you're practicing employee happiness and also just company culture in general, because it is individualized. Um, during the past two years, there's been tremendous amount of challenges and, and change, but also it's an opportunity, especially in the workplace, to redesign systems, to be more equitable, really flex that creativity and innovation. Can you tell me about kind of either a system process or initiative that uh, was changed over the, the past two years at Nimbus? Um, I, I love that you are asking about how we can continue to do to, to do better. Much of the inconsistencies that you are get in companies is oftentimes not because of an intentional, we, we are gonna do it differently or we don't wanna do it right, but mm -hmm. it's more that it's left there and not thought out in a way that can be equitable, in a way that can be easily to pinpoint to the things that may be or are not for all of your employees, right? Um, one of the processes that we, we picked up this year, and I'm very happy to, to be at this point, and we, we are late into the year, for the first time, we had a holistic promotion and compensation review process. Oftentimes in smaller companies, you will have the experience of let's give a raise to this person and let's give a raise to this person. And we know that some employees, they themselves are more outspoken when it comes to asking for raises. Some employee, some managers are more assertive when they are, when it comes to getting approvals for those raises for those promotions and, and so on. But this process of doing it one at a time doesn't really make for an equitable process. Mm -hmm. It may end up in a place where th there's no significant issues yet, not looking at it consistently, mm -hmm. it's not equitable, may leave people left out or forgotten, and that's the type of exercise that breeds inequity. So what we did in partnership with everyone in the organization with the support of, of the leadership team is put a stake in the ground and say, we are going to look at every single person, right? And we are going to make sure that we follow the same process and we follow the same guidelines and we review these decisions as a group versus a one-off. So we can go back and ask, so ask ourselves those tough questions. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Maybe it doesn't, or maybe it does, right? right? But to me, knowing that at the end of this process, we will have thought about how we allocate our resources and made a decision based on performance, based on criteria that we put in place, mm -hmm. makes me feel much better than knowing that we are doing things one at a time, which 
uh, again, it, it's not the most equitable way of handling things. Absolutely. You want to look at the entire system and really operationalize equity, see where you can make improvements. And one of the best ways to do that is with kind of the looking at the performance, looking at how people are promoted, internal mobility plans, making sure that people feel like there's an opportunity to grow in their roles too. I'm sure there is a ton of research out there as well in terms of when people feel like they are challenged and they can grow within the organization, they're more likely to stay as well. And retention has been a huge topic of conversation, especially uh, right now with the great reshuffle or resignation too. Are there any kind of unique policies that you've tested at Nimbus to really increase that retention as well? Um, we are definitely thinking about it and we are taking it a step further to think about great. We know that people are leaving mm -hmm. and we know that good people are leaving. Mm -hmm. So how do we take that and think, how can we attract those people to come to Nimbus? Yeah. If we think it's a great organization right. and they are leaving anyway, we, we trust that most people are leaving not necessarily because they feel unpaid, not necessarily because they don't like what they are doing, or, although in some instances it's a combination of things, but oftentimes it's the culture. Yeah. Right. They don't think it's a, a culture that plays to their strengths. They don't think it's a culture that values them. Mm -hmm. They themselves may have evolved in a different direction than where the company is going. So we are proactively thinking about, can we take this idea and maybe flip it in a way that we can highlight what we believe is an amazing culture? Again, realizing it doesn't work for everyone, but for the people that it does, we want them to be aware of. Um, one of the things we are immediately doing is a series of conversations with our employees to get them the chance to talk about why they find Nimbus a good place to be at. One of the things, Christina, to, to share from my own experience, yeah. um, I've been with the company now since early April. And, and in big part of why I joined this company is because I got from the early conversations with our CEO, with our leaders that people are important to them. And I've been here, what, eight months at this point. And during this time, that, that translated into actions. And that to me, it's huge, right? We are not just saying it's important, but we are putting something behind it. One of the first things I remember my, my, um, my boss said is, you need to fix the vacation policy. And a few months later, we rolled out a new policy, right? One that's more inclusive, one that's more tailored to the needs of our people. We just, we didn't just talk about it, we did it. Yeah. Another aspect we, as other growing companies, our benefits were not the most, um, luxurious or inclusive. But one of the things that we did was immediately put in place a paid parental um, leave. It's not something the company had before, right? Just now we announced that the company is doing a 401k match for their employees. Okay. So part of why I wanted to be here is that realizing that we are growing and some things are not there, we are committing to saying we see them, we hear what our people need, and we are going to add to what we are currently doing. And it's just so rewarding and so empowering. Yeah. And, and many of our employees want to share that back because we, with as time passes, we are getting more and more things added to, to continue to respond to what are the needs of our people. Actions are really important. And we are talking about really inclusive 12 reward benefits from family forming parental leave to 401k matching. These are things that make huge differences in the lives of your team as well. So, and that definitely contributes to the workplace environment and feeling like you're the organization really cares about you and leaders do 
as well. I think one of the reasons why people either join or leave an organization can be related to their manager uh, as well. You're talking to your manager more frequently than you're talking to the chief people officer or another executive as well. In your role, I want to ask what the difference is between managing individual contributors and perhaps managing managers if you do see a difference there. Um, but before I go to that question, I think management is not truly for everyone. I think many people look at managing as a step up. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's much training and much you can learn. But what's very important for me, for people to understand that it doesn't just come easily. Some people are more inclined and they figure it out a little bit easier, right? And they reflect on their experiences, but management, it's hard work. Really? And getting into it for the reason of it's a step forward, or I'm just doing what I always used to do and maybe just a little bit differently, it doesn't work. And that's where we have all of these bad managers that oftentimes will drive people out of the organization. So if I can make an appeal to people who are considering management, do it. It's fantastic. It's rewarding. But mm -hmm. do not take it lightly because you need to put work into it and you need to learn how to do it and you need to refine and you need to continue to evolve mm -hmm. your, your management skills. How is it different managing individuals versus managers of managers, managers of individuals. Um, in some aspects, very different because the, the, the exercises and the tools that you have in your toolbox, you need to apply them differently. Mm -hmm. And also what I will say, it very much depends where your individual contributors or managers are in their um, in their level of professional and personal maturity, right? There's nothing I dislike more in management than hearing managers say, my style is, right? And before they even, they even finish that, that sentence, I will say, you can't afford to say that. Yeah. Your style needs to adjust to your people and what your people need. Because someone who's six months into their career needs very different type of management than someone that is an SME in their area and has been doing that for X amount of time or they are really good at it. Um, with individuals, again, some differentiation based on the level of experience, although it's more around driving for results, accountability, keeping things on track, removing barriers for your team members, right? For right. managers of, um, for, for those that manage managers, it's a tongue twister, um, <laughs> it becomes more about coaching and facilitating um, resources and getting them to, stretch in their own thinking the same level accountability because accountability keeps through through all of these levels um but you have to rely on other aspects that you you may you're still using in the other aspect but to a, to a higher degree i agree that not everybody needs to be a manager as their next step but if you if you know that's something that you would like to do definitely don't take it lightly as well and understand that you're going to manage people with different experiences both lived and learned from you and just understand that communication is different well so that two-way communication is so important especially to foster growth and to get that like feedback as well. Um, I know you mentioned that you joined uh, the team in April and I saw that in February of 2021 Nimbus uh, went through the Series C funding uh, which was really which was an exciting time for the organization. I want to talk about how do you prepare to expand Nimbus's team in an intentional way um, after that kind of growth uh, milestone if you will. We have been growing tremendously over um, the past year. We doubled our employee population. Yeah, that's crazy. We 
very exciting. Um, our client base has expanded significantly, which is a huge win for um, our company. And the way we are thinking, and, and very important to me, we will continue to grow. We will continue to add people, to add resources, to add clients, but it's also doing it in a way that's thoughtful. Mm -hmm. I am sure you, you have heard and seen many startups. Sometimes the first instinct is bring people, bring people, bring people, um, and realize that they either brought people in areas they didn't really need them, or they brought the wrong level of people, or they brought too many people, and now they have to figure out what happens with that, or the company may not be doing as great as they had planned for. So what we are doing at Nimbus, it's really being very thoughtful about, yes, we want to look to the future, but we want to look to the future in a way that's thoughtful and it's positioning our people for success. Mm -hmm. We do find that as we are growing, things are changing so quickly, right? And that the, the type of people that are successful in an organization like ours are those people that don't mind change. Actually, they say, bring it on, they embrace <laughs> it, right? Yeah. But they, they are also looking to make sense of this super, um, of, of this journey ahead of us, right? One, what we can do from my perspective and, and our team perspective is really to coach managers, to work with leaders that if we do add people and we have, do it in a thoughtful way. Mm -hmm. It makes such a difference. Um, bring the levels, bring the right expertise that you need. Right. I do feel personally responsible for the people that are joining this organization because at the end of the day, people have options, right? They could be going to many other companies, mm -hmm. yet for one reason or the other, they chose to come to Nimbus. Absolutely. I think in return, what we own them is to really give them a good glimpse into what they are joining. And this is... Um, this is important because you want to make sure that people are not joining the organization and shortly after they realize it's nothing like what they've been sold on. One of the things that my, my team is doing there is um, early in, the, in their tenure and about three months in, we are meeting with every person that we hired mm -hmm. and we ask them, a couple of questions. One, we want them to know we care, but also, is this what we told you it would be, right? Is your experience consistent with what you expected? Um, how are things going? Is there any um, barriers? Is there Are there any obstacles that we can help you um, navigate or, or maybe remove from your path? And what can we take from your own experience and learn from mm -hmm. with the understanding that everybody's path following should be just a little bit smoother, right? Um, so being thoughtful about setting people up for success. And then once they are in, being honest, being transparent, being empowering them to do their job, they came here. They, they took a role for a reason, right? Okay. Make sure that they are able to do that. And one of the things that I am very aware at this point in, in, um, in my own career, very few people will retire from Nimbus. Some will, but very few, right? right? For most people, it's a chapter in their career story. And I believe if Nimbus does a good job, they will look back and say, that was time well spent. Mm -hmm. I grew, I was respected, I had maybe even made some friends yeah. and I've learned something. And now that it's time for me to move for one reason or the other, I'm in a better place than where I was prior to joining this company. That was time well spent. I think that is a really good 
kind of mindset to have as well when you're thinking about talent, when you're thinking about fostering the growth of an individual past their time at Nimbus as well and having just, you know, a really positive experience in the organization and like thinking about that throughout is is really important. I do want to, when we're talking about kind of growth and we're talking about uh, new strategies, redesigning systems to be more equitable, folks are going to have uh, positive, negative, constructive, anything in between feedback. Um, and of course, trust is required to receive and give any kind of feedback. But how do you see employee feedback management as an important tool to really intentionally cultivate that culture of active listening? Yeah. Um, we spend a lot of time making sure that anything that we do, and by we, I, I mean the organization, myself, our team, is really rooted into what's most relevant for our people. There's nothing worse than asking people for their opinions, but then do nothing with it, yeah. right? Or I, I will put probably at the same level, solving for a problem, but you never validated that was a problem in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one of the things that it's important for us, start with asking our people, what is important? What needs to stay? What needs to go? What needs to be um, looked at differently? Mm -hmm. And you do it in multiple ways. You do it anonymously. We use all voices to, to offer this perspective. You coach managers and you ask managers to do it in their one-on-one -on -one, and many of them have fantastic relationships with their employees and they come back with really good nuggets out of that. We establish relationships within the organization and despite the fact that we are fully distributed, one of the things that's very, very important to us is deep connectivity with our people. One of the um, very well received programs that we've did, the entire executive team had virtual coffees throughout the past few months and will continue to do right. so with everyone in the organization. I can tell you that many of them came back from those conversations saying, we should do this, we should do this. And, and I was pleased to say like, Fantastic. We, we heard it in other ways and it's coming up. Just give us a little bit of time, right? And some of them were applicable to, to our team, some were from other spaces. But, and we do speak to the fact that our initiatives are employee informed. Mm -hmm. If we don't hear that people want, need something, Sometimes the ideas come from us, but even in that instance, we are seeking to validate them. Most often it's coming from both ways or plainly listening to what our people care about. And I believe that really breeds success and it also helps people speak up more. Because if you did it once and it was not received with a, what are you talking about or completely ignored? And then you feel like, well, to what end? I've said it, nobody listened to me. If you said something, it was listened to, action came following that, that cycle. Trust me, that person, the, that team is more likely to talk to you again. Absolutely. So I, I believe it's a path. It's a journey that you continue to build trust and Alternatively, if you are not going to do something, you don't have to respond to every single thing and you can't respond to every single thing, right? right? But acknowledging that you heard it and sharing why they may not happen or not happen at that point in time. I definitely agree. It's each of those pieces. It's not just asking for the feedback. It's not just responding back. It's taking action. It's providing that context as well. And it's a continuous journey too. I liked that kind of phrase as well. And offering those multiple ways for people at different parts of the organization, whether they're new, whether they've been there for five years, to really offer that feedback, meeting people where they are. One of the ways you mentioned of collecting feedback in addition to one-on-ones and people coming to you is in an anonymous way. And I think as 
a leader, sometimes folks are, you know, hesitant to collect anonymous feedback, but I want to know why that's an important part of your uh, kind of listening strategy as a company overall. Yeah. Um, one of the things, Christina, that I, I took a lot of pride throughout my career is building this relationship of trust with the people that I worked with. Absolutely. Where I knew that people within the organization would come and tell me, right? Mm-hmm. I, 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 I believe that. Now, fast forward to working remote, <laughs> what I'm realizing is I remain committed to building those relationships and in time I will, but it's not going to happen as quickly that may have happened maybe five years back. And with some people, I'll get there in six months, with some in a couple of years, and my team holistically as well, you don't want to miss out on that time. Mm -hmm. And if people are not comfortable coming to you, I still prefer that's the the first option, right? Because this way I can ask questions, questions, we, we can figure out ideas, I can try to understand different other um points of context there but if that's not an option I sure don't want to miss out and I do want to hear it even if it's a tiny nugget because maybe I have other pieces of information I connected with I rather offer that additional option and and business leaders should not never be afraid of feedback Mm -hmm. If you don't hear it just because people don't tell you doesn't mean it's not there. So my philosophy is always, wouldn't you rather know? Yeah. (laughs) You don't want to be that one person who everybody around you knew what was happening or knew there was an issue and you're the only person who didn't. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much supportive of any type of feedback that we can receive. And for some people, it's easy to pick up the phone or to do a Zoom call, a video call, right? Some people prefer to to send it anonymously and that's fine as well. I rather have it than not at all. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And that trust piece, it doesn't mean that the organization does not have that as well. You're continually building that too. And it's intentional through a multitude of ways, strategies, I want to talk about kind of your uh, individual kind of position as a leader when you think about other leaders in the organization too. How do you really measure the effectiveness of a people manager or a leader as well to effectively motivate um, and be that source um, of, of leadership for the team as well? You mentioned kind of building those really sustainable relationships and trust, but what does that kind of mean in practice? Yeah. Um, This is an area where I think holistically as companies, we can do so much better. Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes um, we do not have the right level of matching rewards or recognition or consequences to how people manage teams it's always through the filter of results. And in my own career, I know I've seen managers that because they had fantastic results and they were not good managers, Mm -hmm. sometimes they get away with it. It has always attracted me the type of companies, Nimbus including, that are willing to take a stance and say, hey, you being a good manager and an effective manager is very important to how we measure you overall. And I can tell you at this point through through my experience, it's very easy to tell the teams that are engaged and they feel supportive and they feel that they are pushing in the right direction versus the ones that are not. Absolutely. And the biggest impact into how that is shaping up, it really comes down to the manager of that group. So I'll go back to to my comment. Management is not for everyone, (laughs) right? Um, I think 
but realizing that management it's a skill you can work on if you are willing to be vulnerable if you are willing to understand that you do not have all of the answers and you will get better over time it is a very important mindset that managers need to have to be successful so to to your earlier question about how we measure managers we measure them through how engaged their teams are how effective their teams are and trust me you you can tell to different measures that people want to work for those people and feel they are getting something in return mm -hmm. and are willing to stay right we all heard the comment that people don't leave companies they leave managers I, I believe to some extent it is very true, right? The, the way you experience culture and the way you experience your day-to-day, -day, it's, in my view, driven by three aspects, manager being one of them, oftentimes one of the most important, right? Yeah. It's driven by your peers and your colleagues, and it's driven by your internal clients, so the people that you most often work with. If you are in a good position to have those three being good experiences, it's very hard to leave a company. Absolutely. Very hard. Yeah. I definitely agree. And it's really important. All of those pieces coming together, how you're interacting with people. I like the third internal clients too, who you're collaborating with on a daily basis, whether that's uh, other teams or people on your team who are in a different time zone from you as well. Karina, I know we've talked about, you know, things from leadership to company culture to fostering employee happiness and psychological safety with feedback. Is there anything that I either didn't ask that you want to share or one to two key takeaways you want to underscore for our listeners uh, from our conversation today? Um, maybe I'll share something to, to bring it back to the, the beginning of our conversation. I, I spoke a little bit about the people that shaped me in my career and in my journey. One of my dear managers from a previous life would say, you are now in a great company, but trust me, there's many other great companies out there. It's just a matter of finding them. I am still amazed that so many companies have not figured out treating their people right at the holistic level. And I will say that there's always pockets and there's always small things that could be better. And I would like to be different this way this or, or the other. But at the most fundamental level, if you have the respect in the company, if you the, the role and the company plays to your strengths and allies with your values. And you are growing where every year, every six months, you're looking back and say, I'm in a better place. I believe that will give you the right level of engagement. And that will give you the right level of bond between a company and a person, right? Because no one party only gives or only takes. Um, so I do want to encourage everyone to find the right place for them. And once they do, to value it and not to give up on a company before they try to change some things, right? Um, there's oftentimes the, the belief that the grass is greener on the other side, and oftentimes it truly is. Um, but I will say, if, if you can try to make an impact for yourself and for others, you will feel better about it. It will make a difference. And go and find that company that matches with what you want and who you are and what you have to offer because once you do it's a great place to be in you're gonna feel more confident 
you're going to feel more energized. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself. And I know, and I believe with all my heart that work is not just a paycheck. It's something we do for sure, but why not have fun and feel good about it while you're at it? Absolutely. And, and that, that I think it's very much how we are thinking at Nimbus about culture. We, we want to make sure that all of these angles align and people choose to be here because it makes sense for them. And yes, Nimbus is getting a lot out of that, but sh so should our people. Mm -hmm. It's a mutual relationship. And I think that's definitely a common thread throughout our conversation as well of, okay, this employee or the team is doing this for Nimbus, but also what is Nimbus and other companies doing for the employee as well. Again, that social construct, that uh, kind of bond, you have the relationships that are so important that are intentional. They don't just happen. Uh, Karina, thank you so much for being on Reimagining Company Culture. I really enjoyed our conversation here today. Thank you so much, Christina. Always thought-provoking questions. I, I enjoy our conversation. It gets me to reflect back on, on my own experience on the things that we are doing at Nimbus currently and um, also the, the path forward. And thank you for everything you and all voices do. Thank you. I appreciate it. And as a reminder for uh, folks who are listening at All Voices, we really believe in that employee feedback management as a requirement for the company to succeed overall. Have a good rest of your afternoon, everyone.